got our pork butt off of the cooker. Uh, it's about 165 degrees internal temperature. That's just what we're looking for after about five and a half hours at 250 degrees uh, at, at the cooker. Uh, it's just nice, beautiful color on them. That's just about what we're looking for uh, to be ready to foil. Um, so let's go ahead and get some foil out and we'll foil this thing up, show you what else we do. We're going to pull plenty of foil. This is uh, heavy duty food service foil. Um, some places you can get the Reynolds wrap heavy duty in your local stores. Uh, if you can't find it there in the 18 inch wide, uh, it's a lot, the heavy duty is a lot thicker than your standard. Um, regular weight foil that you can get in most of your stores. Uh, find the heavy duty if you can. If you can't find it, you may have to go to a restaurant supply, uh, Sam's Club, uh, any place like that that carries the food service type stuff. That's what this one is, is just food service, um, heavy duty aluminum foil. Um, we always want the heavy duty. And we're actually, we pulled this off enough so we can actually double it. Uh, so we want to get that doubled so we don't worry about uh, breaking our foil, um, losing all the moisture that we've got on the inside of that foil. So let's take this pork butt. And if you'll notice here, uh, the meat side is up here on top. We put uh, the pork butt on the grill, on the smoker, with the fat side down. Remember that white fat cap that we had on the top of it that we trimmed off? Um, and we didn't, remember we didn't season that side of it because that's the side that's on the grill. We put that side on the grate down with the meat side up. That helps, we leave a little bit of that fat on the bottom of it, that helps protect it. Uh, if we happen to lose a little bit that sticks to the grate or anything, if we don't use the foil, uh, it's not such a big deal. This is the side we really are want to keep, keep nice, get ni we've got nice good bark on it, it's that nice color. Part of the other reason we don't worry about season, seasoning the fat side is because when we come into foil, we're going to put that fat side down in our foil and now we're going to add some liquid, uh, some other good stuff uh, to help give us a little bit more flavor. Dun. One of the things we I like to add to them is a little bit of brown sugar. Probably about, we're going to dribble a little brown sugar around the outside edge and just a little bit on top. Probably a quarter cup or so. I never measure it, just kind of handful, uh, depending on how, if you got big pork butts, little ones, if they're bigger ones, put a little bit more on. Um, You can use brown sugar, you use regular sugar, you can use honey. Uh, some guys use agave nectar on them. Then we're going to come in with a little bit of butter. Mo butter, mo butter. I like using the real, real butter. Um, some, some people use parquet on it. I like the real stuff. After all, it's barbecue. It ought to be real. About a half a stick. Because what we are building here is moisture to help us cook that pork butt 
And when we get done, you'll see uh, the moisture that we get out of this foil is going to go back on that pork. So this is going to help give us a lot more flavor, uh, a lot better texture, a lot better mouthfeel. Um, when we uh, pour that back over that pulled pork and when we go to serve it. The other thing I'm going to do at this time before I wrap that in foil, wrap it up tight, is put a meat thermometer in it. This is just a standard uh, digital meat thermometer probe. That we're going to put in. Uh, you can get these anywhere. Uh, local department stores, food service, whatever. The main thing I'm worried about, remember we talked about that money muscle on this side over here? That's what this piece is right here. I'm going to end up with my meat thermometer uh, about centered up and down and the end of it about right here on this pork butt. So I'm going to stick that in. We're going to measure a little bit. There we go, right like that. So we should be actually measuring temperature about in the center of our butt, about right there, uh, centered up and down as well. So now we're going to pull that foil up. Roll that up nice and tight. And you're probably wondering, well, why do we mess with the foil in, in the first place? This foil at this point is going to help give us a more, slightly more tender, a more moist product. Um, if you know what, if you're a cooking guy, or cooking person uh, know what a braise is if you're doing it in the kitchen. You know, braise is cooking meat in a sealed environment in liquid. And that's all we're doing here. We're going to add some more liquid here in a minute. But that's going to act basically what we're doing is putting this uh, pork butt in a braise. That's going to help us uh, cook it a little bit faster, which is going to help keep more moisture in it. The moisture is going to help break down the collagen, uh, some of the connective tissue in that pork butt. And it's also give, going to give us some more uh, liquid to come out of that foil, some good flavorful stuff um, when we get ready to pull it and add some of that liquid back into it. Okay, let's go this way. Tip that up a little bit. We're going to put about a quarter to a half a cup of juice back in there. You can use any kind of juice you want to. Uh, this is just apple juice. Yeah, about that much. Say about a quarter to a half a cup. And I'm also going to use a little bit of peach nectar. I like it. It's sweet. Um, Gives us a little bit of sweet flavor, gives us a little bit of texture, um, but you won't notice the peach flavor coming out in it. Um, that's what I like about these nectars, uh, the peach nectar, the apricot nectar, most any of these in the cans like this. Uh, they do have a nice flavor to them, uh, but you can use them in cooking and a lot of that flavor uh, won't come through. We won't, our pork butt won't taste like peach when it's done. So we got that liquid in there, roll that thing back up, make sure everything is sealed nice and tight. Now we can take it back out on the cooker. Or One of the other things that we've got now at this point 
is if you're tired of running the cooker, uh, your smoker outside, uh, if it's starting to rain out, uh, whatever it is, middle of the night, and you just don't want to stay up with it anymore, um, you can go ahead and throw this in the oven at 250 degrees as well. Because we've got it all wrapped up, there's no more smoke going to get into it. Um, we can just go ahead and finish that up in the oven, and it's still good barbecue. One of the other reasons we can foil at this point is because of that nice crust we've got on the outside of that pork butt, there's no more smoke that's going to get into it anyway. The crust is going to tend to get a little bit darker by the time it's done. Uh, if we don't wrap it, but if we do, now we can maintain that nice color, maintain that nice texture. You can cook, yeah. you can cook pork butts uh, without foiling. A lot of it just is going to depend on what your cooker does, uh, how fast you're cooking them, a lot of different things. So try, a, try cooking them this way, and then try one without foil and just see what it does. You know, that's half the fun of cooking. Half the fun of what we do out here is trying different things, uh, different processes, different techniques to find out what works uh, for you, how you cook, uh, what works for the cooker you've got, uh, all the other variables that we've got going on. So let's go ahead and run this back out to the cooker. We'll put it back on and uh, let it run for another couple hours. We've got our pork butt uh, off of the cooker. Uh, we've actually let it set and rest for uh, about an hour and a half at this point. It's very important uh, with any barbecue, whether it's pork, brisket, ribs, uh, whether you're cooking steaks, whatever it is, always let that meat rest uh, after it comes off. Because what happens when you've got meat on a hot grill, uh, whether it's a steak on a charcoal grill at 500 degrees, uh, on a wood pellet grill at 500 degrees, or whether it's a pork butt on a grill at 250 degrees, when that meat is cooking, the meat fibers shrink up and everything's under pressure as it's cooking. Okay, when you take it back off of the grill now, you want to let it set and rest so that uh, those muscle fibers start relaxing. That gives uh, the moisture that's left inside that meat uh, a chance to redistribute itself evenly in the meat itself. Okay, You've probably all taken a steak or a hamburger off the grill, uh, set it on a plate and cut it, and, uh, and you get a bunch of juice that runs all over the place. If you let it set and rest for a while, you know, a steak, five, 10 minutes is all you need uh, for those muscle fibers to relax and help retain some of that liquid, some of that moisture. Um, when you cut into it, it won't, you won't lose all that moisture out of it. The same thing with the pork butt. It's a bigger piece of meat. You just need to let it rest a little bit longer. One of the things I like to do, if I've got my meat thermometer still in the pork butt, um, go ahead and plug the thermometer back into the digital head, and when that uh, temperature, the internal temperature of your pork butt starts dropping down to 150, 160, that's probably a good time you can start pulling it again. Give you an hour to two hours, you can let them rest for a couple, three hours if you need to. That's why we talked earlier, um, <clears throat> if you don't know how long it's gonna take to cook that pork butt, and you're trying to get ready for company coming over at six o'clock, go ahead and start them early. Start them early, get them done, uh, leave them wrapped in foil, 
uh, throw them in a cooler wrapped in uh, a towel just to help keep some of that heat in there so they don't cool off way too far or if you need to throw them in the oven in the house uh, with the oven turned on low at 140 and just let them set they'll hold for three or four hours that way if you need to it's a whole lot easier to hold them than it is to push them to try to get them done and it's a lot less stress on you when you know you got company coming and it's not done yet finish make sure you get them done early and let them rest um, let's talk about uh, collagen in those just a little bit before we open this up we were shooting for 203 degrees that seems to be about the temperature that it takes to break the collagen down inside that pork butt. The collagen is what is that nice, smooth, silky, uh, fatty kind of looking stuff, but it's also what gives pork butts that nice, smooth, silky texture, gives it that nice mouth feel, uh, gives it that um, moisture. It's what makes a pork butt a pork butt. When you're cooking these pork, brisket, uh, ribs, anything that we barbecue, it's got to get up to a certain temperature before that collagen will start breaking down and start melting. It, in a pork butt, it's about 200, and, 200 to 205 degrees around that 203 degree range. That's why that 203 is so important uh, on the pork butts, briskets, um, tend to work about the same way. If you don't get that collagen melted down, if it's not that nice buttery soft feeling, uh, when you go to probe it, when we tested it outside, that collagen's not melted down, it just needs to cook for a little bit while longer yet. You will hear recipes that call for uh, an hour and a half per pound for a brisket or a pork butt, whatever it is. That's a nice guideline, but the, your, that hour and a half per pound is so dependent upon what size the uh, piece of meat is, what temperature your cooker was running at, um, a lot of different factors go into it. The only real guide to when it's done is how it feels. You get your thermometer out, get your fork out, and poke it in that meat to find out whether it's really done or not. Then let it rest, and now we can get to opening that foil up and pulling some pork. One of the things I like to do is save that juice out of that foil. And if you've got a grease separator, here's what you do with it. Pour that juice off of that foil. before you start pulling it. Now remember when we put the apple juice and the uh, peach nectar in there, it was only about a quarter to a half a cup. Now look at our juice we've got back off of there. We've got about a cup and a half. So where'd that extra liquid come from? That was the extra fat that melted out of the pork butt that's now in here. We're separating some of that off. That's what we're trying to do with the grease separator. But we're also leaving uh, small particles of fat in there that's gonna go back on that meat. Remember, fat is our friend. That's the good stuff. Uh, but we don't want too much of it though either. That's why we use the uh, grease separator. We'll set that aside here for a minute. I'm going to get my gloves on. What I like using is these thin uh, cotton gloves. Or if you've got the heavier cotton gloves like at uh, 
porcelains, what we used to call rope and gloves back home. Uh, the knit gloves, brown jersey gloves work, um, whatever you want to use. And then I go over the top of them with, uh, I like the black nitrile gloves. You can use the blue ones. Um, I like the nitriles. You can use the latex or the vinyls. The nitriles hold up a little bit better uh, with the hot and with the grease and everything else we've got going on in here. So let's open her up and see what we've got. Get our thermometer out of the way. There we go. Nice color on it. Okay, notice over on this side, uh, the blade bone that's sticking out, that's exactly what we're looking for. We should be able to, if that pork butt's done correctly, pull that bone out just like that and it comes out clean. If you can see the moisture on there, see that shine, then we've got a good pork butt coming pretty quick. Leave that for the dog if you want to. Here's, what, here's the way I like to do them. I like hand pulling my pork. I'm not a big fan of chopped pork. Um, you can if you want to. Um, I like hand pulling it so I can get all the fat out of it, uh, make nice uh, sandwiches without a lot of fat left, big chunks of fat left in them. Okay, remember that little thin strip of meat um, we left on the top of the pork butt after we trimmed the fat cap off of it? That's this stuff right here. It's kind of nice and crispy. I, it looks like I lost some of it in the cooker. Uh, didn't have my foil down right, but that's some nice, good, crispy, almost like bacon. Uh, it's been in the bottom of that foil with all that foil juice. It's got a lot of good flavor to it. There's another one of those pieces. Save that back. Here we go. Scooby Snacks. For the kids, for you, the camera operator, whoever. Of course, I can't feed these guys or I won't, we won't be getting anything else done the rest of the day. Just start on the top, peel that fat off the top. There's a nice piece of meat right there we're going to throw in the pan. Another nice piece, just separate the meat from the fat. On this side over here, there's a nice big chunk of fat. Just pull that out. Get your trash can handy. And this is just the way we do it. We start uh, peeling meat, separate the fat off the meat that we're gonna save. And again, this is why we didn't season the fat side of the pork butt, remember that white fat cap that we trimmed off, we didn't season that uh, to start with because it was down in the, it was on the grate on the grill, it was down in the bottom of the foil, uh, we're peeling a bunch of fat off of there anyway, so if you're going to peel all that fat off, why worry about seasoning it and wasting your seasoning? Let's just, we didn't worry about it. One of the other things to look out for, one of the best parts of that pork butt is around that bone. You can see it's a little different color than the other side over here. And this is that collagen stuff we were talking about. It's nice and broken down. You see how that glistens right there? See the moisture in it? That's the collagen that we've got to get melted down, we've got to get broken down uh, before that pork butt is done. That's the good stuff. And 
we're just going to put all that in the pan. Good stuff. that nice bark that we're going to get worked back in there. Peel fat. And this is what we did in the restaurant all the time. Every pork butt we ever did, um, we pulled exactly just like this. Meat and then fat, meat and fat. See, now you can start seeing all the fat seams that are inside that pork butt and all the different muscle structures in there. That's what we were talking about earlier when we were talking about um, the, all the fat on the inside of it and the seven different muscle groups in there. Here's one right there. Okay, more good pieces, uh, good bark pieces right there. Now I'm gonna just pick this piece up. And remember that money muscle that we were talking about over here? This right here is the best part of the pork butt. There's nothing wrong with this side either, but if you wanna save some for whoever's uh, Pulling the pork, this is the pieces right here. There's a nice piece there. Nice piece right there. A nice fat layer. Again, that's keeping a lot of moisture in there for us, keeping giving us a lot of flavor. But if I'm eating a pulled pork sandwich, I don't want those fat chunks in my sandwich. So we're just gonna get rid of them. That's again why I like to pull pork. Just my preference. Nice piece with a bunch of good bark on it. Now, if you really wanna impress somebody you get that separated off. Right there is the best part of the pork butt. That money muscle that was down here on this end is right there. Nice color. It's got seasoning on the outside of it. It's got smoke. It's nice and tender on the inside. So if you want to save that for somebody special, you sure can. Let me see here. There we go. See our smoke ring we've got into it? The dark, the darker spot on that uh, pork right there. That smoke ring is set down in there about that far. That's about, about what we should see. You can get more, you can get less. It's gonna have a nice, light, smoky flavor. It's not overpowering. It shouldn't taste like lighter fluid. It shouldn't taste like charcoal. It shouldn't taste like you're gonna belch it back up in a couple, three hours. Just a nice, light, smoky flavor. And that's what we're gonna have with this. Here's another good piece with some nice smoke ring on it. See from that bark, the darker colored texture right there, that's that good smoke ring. And that was only in the cooker for about five and a half hours before we foiled it. That's what we're looking for. See, it's nice and moist, it's tender, it falls apart. Now we're gonna come in and break this up.
you can either leave some of these nice bark pieces in the corner or break them up and work them in with the rest of it. Your preference, however you want to do it. I'm going to save some of those bark pieces over there. Actually, I'm going to pull those out and put them over here with that money muscle. And show you how we're going to present this pork butt. I don't want to get it too fine. I do want to break it up. If you get it too fine, it'll start uh, mushing up on you. Um, it's done just right, though, for what we're doing with it. There we go, another nice little bark piece. Okay. Taste test, see what we got. Yep, that'll work. Okay, remember that foil juice we poured off of there? We've got the fat separated off of it now. I can pour some of the fat off. And now we're gonna pour probably about a cup of that back in there. Just to make it nice and moist. Just stop before you get down to the fat. There we go. And I'm also gonna come back in with a little bit of the Kelly's frickin' chicken. Dust over the top of that again to give it a little bit more flavor. Stir that up. See, we've got that foil juice back on there. It's nice and flavorful. Makes us nice and moist again. We had a good, nice, good, moist pork butt to start with. But if you notice down in the bottom of that pan, most of that juice we poured back in there is soaked back up into that meat. That's where we want it. Okay. So now you got people coming over for your party. We're going to take these bark pieces. Set those back up on there. And now your guests can get some get a little bit of bark along with the pulled pork. Remember the little strips of baked pig candy down there off the bottom of that pork butt? And then I'm going to take this uh, money muscle and we're just going to set it right in the middle. Like that. And now you are ready to serve. So now we've got a, a pork butt that didn't really cost us all that much. Uh, you've got um, about four pounds of meat to come off of it. You can serve 15, 20 people with that, depending on how hungry they are. Um, you are ready to go. Well, that uh, pretty well does it for uh, the pulled pork uh, for Next Tech Pitmasters. Um, turn into us uh, for the next round, which will be uh, pork ribs coming up, and uh, we'll go from there. <laughs>